Hi there, welcome to the Noah Presgrove case. Most recently, there has been bombshell news, all kinds of unexpected stuff going on, complete chaos elsewhere, except for this channel because it's under control. Today, what I want to focus in on in regards to the Noah Presgrove case, regardless of what's going on elsewhere for most part of it, is a timeline map analysis, side-by-side -side comparison, something that has never been done before on this channel until now. And it might have not been done before by other people either. You've seen my map analysis, you've seen the timelines with Caden Pressey in regards to the Partners in True Crime interview. We're going to be comparing that one, side-by-side, -side, with the one done in June 2024. Partners in True Crime occurred in July the private leaked one was done in June. So there's a month's part difference. But would there be a big difference in retelling the story? In terms of details and how specific it is, you'd kind of expect it. One being a private interview, the other one being more open. It's going to differ. But the timestamps, you would hope, are the same. And that's, that's not exactly true. When I did my analysis reaction at the time with the leaked interview, I was thinking whoa, that, that, did that really happen And at that time? It's going to make a lot more sense when we unpack it on Google Earth very shortly. I just want to give an introduction today because a lot has gone on recently. Some people may be familiar, others unaware. But that aside, welcome to those currently here in this live premiere. Share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. And at any point you've got comments, questions, elaborate on any points, watching on catch up, reaching the end of this video, whatever, leave comments down below under the video and I can respond back. You'll also find a pinned comment message by me at the top with additional links if you do want to support this channel. If you simply want to catch up on recent coverage by me, top right corner of the screen where the eye symbol is, click up there, you'll be able to find it. In case you have missed out on stuff, there's ways to um, watch, so that's all fine there. So yeah, we'll be getting into a map analysis today. I mean, there might be some additional points to refer to, such as what's going on here? Really, what's going on here? Ask Sharon. Sharon thought it would be a good idea to turn the tables about, and unfortunately, I can't move at this moment in time. Even if I wanted to, even if I needed to, I'm not going anywhere. Hmm? So, yeah. But whilst this is around me, I've got to be careful just in case I do get snatched at any moment. More about that later. Be sure to stick around. As well, before I do forget, what also needs to be acknowledged today is where I defend myself to an extent. Whether there be a misunderstanding, miscommunication, a fake account somewhere of it's the real deal... There appears to be an unhappy customer with war-like refs services. And I know that makes me sound like a prostitute, but don't worry, I'm not. This is in regards to some simple, light-hearted healing videos. And it's kind of backfired, supposedly. Things have been said about me behind my back, supposedly. But I'm aware I am going to do a balanced analysis summary of it today to the best of my ability but I'm also going to compare and contrast to what I've seen by the same individual publicly because I do have it documented. We'll see what happens but be sure to stick around for that. That'll be done later on today. What we really need to focus in right now is Caden Pressey's timeline because while some additional details are provided sometimes are a little bit different and it can impact like a chain reaction of all the other events which occurred after or just before. Is everything brought back by a bit or is it pushed forwards? And how does that impact the situation we've known at the time? The party with previous timestamps of what we've heard of and what we thought were very consistent. Is it still consistent now? Well, let's head on over to the projects. As you can see on screen, there is a lot of text, but you might think, oh, it's reasonable. You know, it looks like it's organised quite well. We'll get to it, but you know what? If we zoom on in, dun-dun-dun, look at all that. Look at all these markers, 
all over the place. But no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I'm going to explain it to you very quickly now, like, you know, like a colour key code, so you know what's what. On the left, in blue, is Caden Pressey's timeline as of his June 2024 leaked interview. Then on the right-hand side, highlighted in the red markers, is what Caden Pressey has stated in his July timeline publicly on Partners in True Crime. I've done it side by side so we can compare it bit by bit, mostly in the correct order of the times, the dates and all of that. Now there might be some markers which just don't have a time and that's not my fault, that's just because Caden didn't give a time with certain stuff, but a day was given at least. Now the only other markers to highlight up here is the like, orange yellowy, that's mainly remained the same. And there are a couple of missing markers, that's probably because it's consistent with one another. But it's all about just comparing on the same screen. It's okay doing a separate video of one timeline, then a separate video of another. But if you can have it all on one screen, you can see it all in one go. It's easier. And hopefully people do find it easy. If it is a bit too much or overwhelming, I'll go through it bit by bit. It's okay. So which one are we really focusing on? Mainly the left one, because it's the first time round of me doing this. Now on the sides, you'll see these like little sub markers, okay, on the left hand side, that Friday and Saturday, Caden Pressy said there were 40 people at the party. That number has been said many times before, but the day it's been used on is a bit questionable. Sunday, Caden said there was only 15 people present at the party. Now, that would sound more believable simply because of the party footage, what we've seen. There was only a handful of people in those videos. There was nowhere near 40 people present, you know, as proof to show that they were there. But you know what the issue is? This is where the first bit of conflict comes in with Caden's timeline within a month's difference. Caden says Friday, Saturday, 40 people. Well, what did he say on Partners in True Crime? Or what has been referenced by Caden? That on the Saturday, it was close friends only. People that have known each other for a very long time, met at car parks in the past in other towns, hanging out and drinking. So that consisted of Caden Pressey, Noah Presgrove, uh, Jack Newton, I guess, I guess uh, Isaac Rojas, um, Logan, Avery, Carter, Jasmine, Brylan and Sweat, you know, people like that. So it's like eight, nine close friends, maybe a few of us if I've forgotten their names, but like eight, nine people. It kind of made sense on Saturday. Then Sunday morning, the same situation. And then when it got to Sunday night, the 30 to 40 people showing up where the you know, the hype about it online with social media and more people being invited, more so friends of Avery Combs, but strangers to the others like Caden, Noah, etc. So that was mentioned on Partners in True Crime. Close friends, Saturday, small knit group. Yet a month before that private interview, Caden says Friday and Saturday, 40 people present. That's a big difference, isn't it? It's the wrong way round. But which one's right? Which one's wrong? I don't know, because it's worded differently in each interview. And as for Sunday, only 15 people present, but in the Partners in True Crime one, 40 people present. It's kind of like been flipped about. But let me tell you something. What's really important is Friday is mentioned. The day that I have questioned over time, which has been brushed aside and people have said, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And yet how it was worded by Caden in the private interview, 40 people were at the party on a Friday and a Saturday. That's how it comes across as, right? And yet who was really there on Friday? I mean, you'd say Avery Carter, because they lived there at the time, and supposedly Logan, and maybe Jack, but anyone else? I don't know, but if there's 40 people present, interesting how that's gone. Because in the past, how it was interpreted, right, the original timeline, even though it was a later one, which it turned out to be, it made more sense 
30 to 40 people on Sunday, because that was more of a possible link to then Monday morning, the crossover. If the strangers all come on down closer to the day leading to Noah's death, there could be a stronger link. If the masses and strangers were present much earlier on, days beforehand, and then left after that, there's not as much room for that to link in with strangers killing Noah. You get what I'm saying? How one thing links to another. It becomes a bit more distant, apart. That it was saying um, with Sunday, as in the private interview, you had mainly 15 people, more than likely closer friends, or the close friends. They're the ones present, who out of them are responsible or possibly responsible for the outcome of Noah. Whereas with Friday, Saturday, 40 people, there's more hands, more more people present, more opportunities, and yet nothing happened then on those days. It was described as normal. Anyway, that's just one inconsistency, first of all. The next inconsistency, what we need to look at is, Caden Pressy said he arrived Friday. Now, it switched and changed throughout the private interview. I believe at first he said about he arrived on Saturday, Jack Newton, who in which Caden was a, a best friend or a very good friend of, closer than Noah Presgrove between Caden. But either way, Caden Pressy said, uh, Jack told him, do you want to come on down to this party here? I'll pay for your gas money. And Caden was reluctant before that because of the distance and the cost but Jack supposedly offered to pay for the journey, the ride, you know, um, the gas to refuel. And Caden Pressy accepted. Now, it wasn't paid for. Caden had to do it himself. But he wasn't too bothered by it. And that was all on a Saturday. Well, yeah. It kind of links in, doesn't it? With what you mentioned in Partners in True Crime. Caden Pressy arrives Saturday. But the big issue is, in the private interview a bit later on then Caden said no I was there Friday yeah I remember I was there Friday as well so that would mean everything's brought back a bit by a day or so so what does that mean that Caden was called told by Jack to come on down to the party not on a Saturday but on a Friday because Caden said he arrived on the Friday but he also said he arrived on the Saturday for the first time can you see the conflict you either first arrived to the party on a Friday or a Saturday, one or the other. Now, a bit later on in that interview with the, the police guy, um, Caden was switching and changing, and then the police guy said, you know, you probably were there Friday anyway, yeah, you would have been just like how other people were, and then Caden kind of like agreed with it. Now, could you say that's an unnatural situation where the police guy is kind of indirectly forcing Caden to comply with that timeline, even though it may not be true. It depends how you look at it, because earlier on in that interview, Caden did say himself he was certain he was there Friday. And unless you got down there Friday really late, that it crossed over into Saturday, just like how people like to say Sunday night, but they're talking about Monday morning, saying it's the same thing, when really it's not. But, you know, if, it, if it's daylight, it's going to either be Friday or it's going to be Saturday, really, isn't it? So... That's problematic, because if Caden was at the party on a Friday, like how he states in his uh, private interview, what else happened? Who else was there? It would tie in with Caden supposedly knowing about Friday and Saturday being 40 people present, starting on Friday, because Caden was there. Now, am I stating it as a fact that I know Caden was there Friday? No, I'm just simply relaying on what's been said by himself as like a witness. But it switches. It's not consistent with the one here. Okay? Let's move on to the next timeline, stamp of events. I'm going to be going back and forth. I'm sure some people will complain and say they get dizzy, but here's what it is. So, on a Saturday, no time given... Caden said, at some point, Noah Presgrove wrestled Mikey Lair outside the patio area on the front, I believe. And if we look at the house, just for a second here, you can kind of see the patio area. It's where that roof overhangs, just uh, by the side of that car parked up. 
And we have seen party footage where they've been there, where Brylan sweat slept nowhere and then ran off and then you saw that light po lamp post there in black. It's all the same thing because it's in this area close to the house where the patio is. Now, Noah supposedly beat my Mikey, dominated maybe. Did Mikey feel a bit embarrassed, frustrated, any grudge held against Noah? Who knows? But it's just an event that took place. Maybe they were just messing about harmless fun. But as you know, if people focus in on the slap game going out of control, same could have applied to the wrestling. But the fact that it happened Saturday and Noah ended up dying on the Monday, there's a bit of time in between for things to settle down. So it didn't exactly escalate in the moment, unless there was a bit of a longer forming grudge building against Noah. It's worth taking into consideration. Now, is it consistent with the partners in True Crime interview that Noah Presgrove wrestled Mikey? No. To my knowledge, when I was looking at it, I don't remember hearing anything about it. So basically, this private interview had additional details which were never mentioned in the Partners in True Crime one. And with Noah wrestling Mikey Lair on Saturday, which may not be a big significant event, it's just interesting how it wasn't brought up in Partners in True Crime unless it's just because Caden forgot about it with time. But there's only a month's difference between June, July, or close to a month. It depends on the exact day it falls on for those interviews, right? But in terms of the original timeline, Caden Pressey arriving Saturday, supposedly, the party being normal, no issues going on, then the following day goes to Warica with friends, the long-time friends, the small group, for breakfast. How does that link up with this one? Well said, there's a few additional details in between which were added on here. So, besides Saturday, Saturday slash Sunday, stayed at house with the girls, watched movies. Now, I don't remember hearing anything about watching movies at the house from what Caden said in the Partners in True Crime interview. I do remember Caden mentioning about staying at the house, more so being dropped off at the house with the girls. And that happened on the Sunday. Because if we go back to her, just to see if there's any consistency, Sunday goes to Warwicka in the morning time with friends for breakfast, then later returns to the party house with the girls only, and then the other guys go back out into town with Caleb Newton. Noah Presgrove makes his own way back home in his vehicle, and then later supposedly called back to reattend the party. So you'd be familiar with that by now. As for the exact timing of when these things happened, no time was given, but you think of Sunday morning breakfast, it'll be fairly early on, right? So, that's pretty much it there for at least Sunday morning, but how consistent is it with this one? Well, it's the fact that Caden kind of said Saturday, Sunday, and I was a bit confused as in how he was wording it. I think in the end, he actually meant Sunday it happened where they stayed at the house with the girls and watched movies. But did Caden directly mention in the order of going out to get breakfast with friends and then coming back to the house? Not from what I can remember. In the Parts and in True Crime one, Caden said he was dropped off back at the house with the girls and then the others went back out. Here, it was mentioned in the private interview month before that Caden simply stayed at the house. To say stayed at the house would mean you never left. But Caden said he did leave to get breakfast with the people in Warwicka. You get what I'm saying? It's a little bit problematic. Now, it might just be down to language and wording, and it's not a big deal, but you see how I can be when it comes to trying to pick up on stuff. It needs to be clear, so there's no confusion. Uh, watching movies, nothing strange about that. It's just another detail which was brought in earlier on. But on the same day, let's just say supposedly Sunday, and I guess it's like morning time onwards, later going to a store to buy alcohol. Not Caden directly. Caden was with some of the other party goers. All girls? I'm not too sure. But I do remember Caden Pressy referring to it in the past on a Facebook statement saying he was in a, a store. I don't know if it was Mini Mart 
I'm not sure if it was elsewhere, or it had been Terrell or Warica or somewhere else in between. But Kane said he witnessed Avery buy the alcohol. Now, how much alcohol was exactly bought? Not too sure. And was it that more alcohol was bought because it already ran out the day before? I mean, if that's the case, that either have a drawback on the Saturday events of drinking or the Friday events of drinking, depending when Caden said he stayed at the house with the girls, whether that be on a Saturday, then it would mean the Friday alcohol was used up. So then on the Saturday later on, more alcohol had to be bought. But if Caden actually meant, no, this all happened on a Sunday, just like how it was mentioned here in the Partners in True Crime one, after breakfast, returning back with the girls to the party house and then going out themselves to get some alcohol. Okay. But do you see how it's worded? It's a little bit different. It comes across as if it's happened in a different order or more so on a different day. But either way, alcohol present, that seems to be consistent. And I said, I do remember Caden doing a public Facebook statement post about being present with others when buying alcohol and seeing Avery buy it. Did it happen on a Saturday or a Sunday? It wasn't made that clear in the private interview. I'm leaning more towards probably the Sunday, likely. Now, if it's on the Sunday and they went out to the store to buy alcohol, was that during the time of when the other guys were still out in town and when Noah was at his own place of living, I'm guessing? Hmm. Anyway... The next timestamp mentioned, and yes, this probably should have been added a bit further up the list here towards the start, but as said, the Saturday-Sunday event of staying at the house kind of threw me off. But basically, 12 p.m. on a Saturday, okay? So it's really towards the very start up here about no Presgrove wrestling Mikey Lair as on a Saturday. But at 12 p.m., Noah Presgrove argued with Jack Newton. How consistent is that with what we see in the Partners in True Crime one? Well, the fact is, it just wasn't mentioned in the interview and it wasn't even brought up as a question. Caden didn't refer to it. Now, we were assuming that the reason why it just didn't happen was because Caden didn't see or hear it. So there's no point in talking about it because he didn't witness it. And yet in the private interview, he clearly does know something about it because he even gave a timestamp of when it happened and the day it occurred on, Saturday, 12 p.m. Now, 12 p.m. basically is 1,300 hours. So it's just going into the afternoon, right? Just after lunch. The other way of saying 12 p.m. could mean 0, 0, 0, 0 going into the new day past midnight. Isn't that correct? I'm sure I saw it on TikTok where they said 12 p.m. can mean just after lunch, but also at 0000 going into the next day. It can mean two different things. And I guess it depends how it's worded. But I find it interesting, if it is 12 p.m. and it did happen Saturday and it's just after lunchtime, hmm, interesting. But to call it 12 p.m., I mean, I, 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 I just call it, do I just call it 1 p.m.? Or do you just call it 2 p.m.? No, yeah, 1 p.m., 1,300 hours. I say, what do I say, 11 a.m.? Do I say 12 a.m. or do you say 12 p.m.? I don't know, to be honest. It's, I've never really thought about it. But either way, an argument took place between No Presgrove, Jack Newton. It's just interesting how Caden knows about it here, but he doesn't mention it in the public interview. Is that because the argument is a critical piece of evidence or a part of the timeline and it's quite serious? Where did the argument take place exactly? Well, at the party house, but I don't know if that was inside or outside the building. I mean, the, the way I think of it, regardless of time, one thing that surprised me, caught me off guard, was who started the argument. Now, just at least online only, across different communities, and maybe some key people referencing it, that it was Jack Newton that started the argument with Noah Presgrove, that Jack had an issue with Noah, that Noah did something wrong, maybe, and it was to do with the theme of girl trouble, uh, jealousy, flirting, and all of that messy stuff. But from what Caden Pressey said, what actually happened 
was that Noah Presgrove yelled and had a go at Jack Newton uh, because Jack Newton supposedly was flirting with Noah's girlfriend at the time, who also didn't attend the party. So I don't know how you work that one out unless the flirting took place days, weeks beforehand and Noah only found out recently, so then he took it out on Jack to question him. Hmm. Because I don't know how you could flirt with someone at a party if they're not even there, unless you're doing it through digital communication via a text message or a phone call. Either way, Noah had an issue with Jack, not Jack having an issue with Noah. Interesting, isn't it? And that's how it was worded by Caden Pressey. Originally, we thought it was Jack that had the issue. And with that argument possibly continuing on the Monday over the same theme, it's like constant tension building and it being one-sided. But in this situation, it doesn't seem to be one-sided. Whereas people might have an issue at a certain point with Noah, early on, it was Noah having problems with other people. Interesting, it kind of fills it out, the perspective. So we can't say there's consistency here because in one interview, Caden acknowledges the argument and in the other one, he doesn't mention it at all. And that could be interpreted as he didn't see or hear anything, so there was no need to mention it. But if partners in true crime asked the correct questions about it, do you remember the argument on the Saturday and Jack supposedly saying it was all cleared up and fine? Maybe Caden would have referenced it, but we'll never know now because it's it's in the past. And if you tried recreating it now, it would be unnatural. So besides that, what else happened Saturday? Well, Caden originally said that on uh, the Saturday it was pretty normal. Nothing to really see, nothing really odd going on. Um, returning to the... Oh, yeah, because that's, that's to do with the... Sunday. Let's make sure. Yes, Sunday. Mm -hmm. So then we just go straight into Sunday because Ken said it was a, a normal day as in, as in Saturday. Nothing bad going on. No problems. Um, Sunday as in, you know, you know, breakfast, gas station, going back to the house, staying there and maybe going back out for alcohol if the other timeline is true and if it runs in line, parallel. Well, not quite in parallel, but one after another in the correction of events. And then, when it gets a bit later on, getting to the afternoon time or so, the rest of the guys return back to the party house. And then I guess Noah too. And tagging along, being dropped off at the party. And supposedly Mikey is given a lift down as well. So everyone's all together once again at the party house, right? And that's when the series of shooting animals takes place, right? So we'll compare it in a second. Let me just align it quickly. In the afternoon, they went shooting animals. Um, do we have a marker that's quite the same? Returns to the house when it gets dark. So they went out in terms of shooting animals. And we compare it to the June one. Um, here we go. Sunday, Caden Pressey, Jack Newton, Brylan Sweat, Isaac Rahas, Noah Presgrove, shooting animals on the land. So it's pretty much consistent with what Caden said in the public true Partners in True Crime interview. So we finally got some consistency, which is good. Unfortunately, no time was ever given. Just that it was kind of like getting towards the afternoon or in the afternoon and then by the time it started going dark, they were making their way back to the party house, which makes, you know, good sense. You don't want to be driving around in the dark, I guess. So the only detail that was added, but retrospectively, was in the private interview that said they went down Country Road. Could be any one. It could be the one what we see here, that dirt road coming down to the party house. And they also drove in the fields. And I'm guessing the fields nearby here, the ones which are owned by the people, own the land, you got better access to it. You're not going to get in the same trouble as if you were trespassing elsewhere, let's just say. But in the partisan true crime interview, Caden Pressey never really said where they went shooting animals. And that's why I did my map analysis video trying to work it out and question it. And indirectly, we got the answer. So just going down here, possibly driving down that road, coming out from the party house, and then going onto those fields over that way. How much distance covered? Who knows? 
How much time did they spend out there? Who knows? But it's just the regulars. You know, all the names what we've heard of before, all of the guys, the males, with the exception of Mikey Lair. My question is, did Mikey Lair not attend the shooting of the animals because there was no space in the vehicle? Or is it more so because of the PTSD, you know, firing guns, loud bangs? It could trigger it for someone. That's just a little question there. And then the field's over that way too, which they would have access to, and they shouldn't really get in too much trouble either. Driving about shooting animals because supposedly you can do over there in Oklahoma, or at least in that portion of area. But the other detail to add on was what vehicle did they use? Well, just so happens that in the private interview, it was explained. Uh, Jack Newton's Ford Ranger, which I think is a pickup truck. So they didn't use the side-by-side -side for the hunting of animals. They used a, a Ford Ranger pickup truck, which would have had enough seats for people to sit in, passenger, back seats, and maybe in the trailer part, if it was open, could sit in the back possibly with guns and shoot animals. So it just gives a better perspective as in where did they go? I guess they didn't go too far. But when you think of fields and you hear references over time like either Stevie Howard or Sarah Long about picking teeth up in a field as in a giving a scenario but a very specific one, it's just these little links, it reminds me, right? Oh, you were over there doing that activity. Well, did anything else happen over there later with Noah Presgrove? Because it seems like Noah Presgrove was clearly present in the time when you were hunting elsewhere and everything seemed like it was going okay. So what went so wrong? You get what I'm saying? Noah Presgrove, something very bad may have happened to him on the Monday when he distanced himself if he did go outside in the dark early hours of the morning and someone or some people could have caught up with him. Maybe an ambush. But if any of the people possibly involved who were also present in the Ford Ranger when driving about shooting animals and Noah was there too, how come they didn't take that opportunity then? When they were driving away from the party house, when they were going off into the fields, right? You could drive all the way over here, you could get near the woodland and if you really wanted to, you could possibly finish Noah off just like that there. And who would really know if it's further away? The noise may not travel quite the same. It depends if there's much wind blowing at the time. But you know what I'm saying? There's been possible opportunities at this party from Saturday at least, Sunday more so, and then obviously Monday. And if they're getting about, going from point A to point B, back and forth, was there a right time and a right moment to strike on Noah or what? I mean, people say that when it came to Sunday after breakfast, when Noah made it back to his place of living later on into the day, it was Jack Newton that called Noah and wanted him to come back, but not just to come back, but needed him, wanted him in a desperate way. Is that just said then they could get the, you know, hands on him, but they wanted Noah to be picked up and not be driven, uh, not drive himself down, so then he's more vulnerable and dependent, but he can't really leave once he arrives because he's got no vehicle of his own. But still, the location of where something bad could take place, the closer it is to the house, you've got the risk of the CCTV cameras, whether they work or not. There's a form of surveillance. You've got possible witnesses near to the house or inside of the house, which can be problematic, but doing it further away from the property would be more successful for those involved. But why did it not happen during the shooting of the animals when distancing themselves? Is it because the likes of Caden Pressey was there? And if Caden Pressey is innocent, he would have been a witness to it all unfolding in the moment. And maybe some of the guys, if any were responsible, knew that and thought, well, we can't do it just yet. We'll have to do it at a time when Noah is by himself and there's absolutely no one else around. That's what I just wanted to add in. That's why there was an importance of where were they at what times roughly or on what day and why did it not happen then when there was an opportunity? Why did it happen Monday exactly? Is that just down to the flow of who comes and who goes at a certain time? That you need the right people in the wrong place at the right time for them but not for Noah? Does make you think. So if we just zoom on out and we come back here, Sam. 
extra details have been given, which is a positive when it comes to the, the shooting. There we go. So, what else happened Sunday? There were some events, but not all the times were given. And there'll be some party footage as well, which could link on, but we don't need to go too deep there. We're just referring to what Caden said in his interview. So once again, the cousin arriving. Was there an exact time given in his private interview? Can't quite remember, but it still seems consistent, roughly, with what we said in the Partners in True Crime one. Because with Partners in True Crime, um, let's just find it, Returns out to in dark. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. 10.30pm, cousin arrives. Caden Pressy sobers up. So there is that. There seems to be consistency there, as in on the day and then going into the evening. So that's fine. No issues. But let's at least acknowledge just the odd other event which supposedly took place. So in regards to the shooting of the animals and then returning back to the house when it got dark, Caden Pressy didn't give a time... But before he went to sleep, as in Monday morning, he said earlier on, which could come across as in getting closer to the day before, Sunday night, Caden Pressy overheard Noah inquiring about having a shower. So even before the side-by-side -side rollover and getting dirty Monday morning, that Noah, Sunday night, was already considering having a shower but Caden didn't see it. He only heard it. So maybe Noah was going to, but then delayed it. And then because of the side-by-side -side felt, well, it's probably now the time to do so. It's just a few extra details to add in. Now, Caden Pressy didn't mention that in the private interview. Caden didn't mention anything about overhearing Noah wanted a shower. No. So that's why it's not included here. But for the cousin... To have arrived, Caden Pressy's cousin. As for the name, I do have an idea of the person's name. It begins with a G, but I don't know if to say it or not, because I think Alicia Lee or someone wants it kept kind of private, even though technically it's not now, but there's no harm in doing so, because at the end of the day, from the looks of it, Caden Pressy's cousin arrived and left before whatever happened to Noah right? We can still compare and contrast if there are any um, unusual timestamps given, but it just seems to be in line there with those particular events. Now, besides the cousin arriving, we start transitioning closer to Monday morning. Now, before we actually get into that, I just want to make sure that we're okay here. So, yeah, 10.30 p.m., Cousin arrives, Caden Pressy sobers up, watches over her to make sure she's okay. And then at a certain point after 10.30pm, but before 2am, as in Monday morning, in between 10.30 to 2am, Noah Presgrove um, went up to Caden Pressy asking for a lift back home. That's what Caden Pressy said himself. Caden said he didn't know the time of when it happened, but it was earlier on. So that's why I say in between 10.30 Sunday night and 2 in the morning, Monday morning, right? Um, but Caden like, turned down Noah because Caden said he's been drinking, he's just not really able to drive, he could get in trouble. So it's, it's responsible that, but at the same time, for Caden to say earlier on, as in Sunday night, Caden Pressy sobered up, well, why couldn't he drive Noah back home? Is it because it's not literally meant sobering up but not properly? Still blood within the, the body, the system, so it just wouldn't work anyway. In terms of designated drivers, supposedly there was only one out of 40 people a designated driver, from at least how it's been worded, which was Carter Combs. Now, does Carter Combs drink alcohol or not? Just a simple answer is a question, I mean, because if she doesn't drink alcohol, it makes sense being a designated driver. But, you know, you, you're forced to be a designated driver. You're not allowed to drink even though you want to drink. Then it seems a bit unfair because it's your own place of living. You should be able, should be able to have a drink, right? But I don't know the full story there. That's why I've just added those questions in. Anyway, 
the next timestamp, what we heard in the Partners in True Crime timestamp interview, is that when 2 a.m. in the morning of Monday came about, that's when Caden Pressey decided to go to sleep. And just before doing so, he noticed that Noah Presgrove, Jack Newton and all the others were awake, alive and, you know, still getting on with stuff. Supposedly, around 2am there was when uh, Brylan, Sweat, Isaac Rojas, Mikey Lair were resting near to Caden. So that puts that into perspective. Uh, but how much does it differ to what we heard in the private interview? Was there any off things mentioned? Well, first of all, just before two in the morning, some additional details were given, stuff which was never mentioned beforehand. So that is that Monday, 1.30am, Caden Pressey filmed Brylan Sweat slap Noah Presgrove. Now, originally, I thought it was Sunday night, and maybe it was actually worded like that at a time where people were referring to Monday morning, but they said Sunday night is the same thing. And as you know, I don't really agree with that. But 1.30 a.m. Monday morning, that's what, 30 minutes before Caden said he went to sleep, Caden was able to record Noah Presgrove and Brylin Sweat. So now you know who's behind the camera in that situation and at that time. That's good to know. It's just more context, but it wasn't mentioned in Partners in True Crime, which you could say is a little bit disappointing. So the other timestamp is either before or just after or somewhat in between, I probably should be saying, Sunday, Monday, as Caden referred to it as, that all were asleep, but Caleb Newton, not Caleb, sorry, Colton, Colton Newton, older brother to Jack Newton, Travis Monson, and a skinny guy, no named mentioned, returned to the house to take some beer. What did they do after that, then? And how did they return in a singular vehicle and where were they before that to say return means they were at the party possibly earlier on on the day of sunday or maybe saturday this is a key detail which wasn't mentioned in the partners in true crime timeline interview as you saw just before no details like this mentioned so it seems like quite a critical piece because these are key named individuals that haven't really come up much in conversation but only in recent time, publicly, we started hearing about it more and it's intensified more. Okay. Apologies if the text is kind of like in line with one another. It shouldn't be doing that. I think if I zoom out, it might order itself a little bit better. I don't know why it does that though. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. So I had to click on it to rearrange it. So the Monday 1.30am filming by Caden of Brylin slapping Noah happened after. Awesome. Well, that's at least how it's arranged here. And then the cousin and then that. Yeah, so once again, because Sunday slash Monday crossover, it kind of threw me off when Caden was referring to it. That's why I ordered it in the way it happened. But in all reality... For Caden to say, when we were all asleep, that's when Colton Newton, Travis Monson and a skinny guy returned to the house to take beer. All asleep. I mean, I don't know if I'm correct in saying, but was there ever a time where everyone was asleep Monday morning going onwards? Not from the looks of it. In terms of Sunday night, supposedly no one went to sleep because Sunday crossing over into Monday early hours of the morning is when people decide to go to sleep, like Caden Pressey did, 2am. And the exception would be Jack Newton that claimed, oh, I and my girlfriend Carter went to sleep at 11.30pm Sunday night and then that changed to sleeping 1 in the morning, then 2 in the morning. But whilst Caden Pressey was awake through that time up until 2 in the morning, 
then going to sleep, he witnessed that Jack was still awake. So it came across as that Jack was a liar. Not a good look, is it? So that really did happen, that all were asleep. I just find it hard to believe. It's Monday morning when all were asleep. I just didn't think everyone was asleep. I thought people went to sleep at different times. Two in the morning, you had Cade and Pressy, Mikey, Isaac and Brylan all asleep or at least resting. And then everybody else at the party were awake. Now, it was Jack Newton that said in his last interview, Partners in True Crime, that when it got past a certain point, they all started getting ready to go to sleep. They all had the showers individually. I've just not seen that event backed up too much. So I just want to know your thoughts as a viewer. Sunday, Monday, everyone asleep, upset for Colton, Travis and a skinny guy returning to the house. You're saying there was absolutely no one else awake Sunday or Monday to see these people come in. But Caden was aware because of the noise or something may have woken him up. But at what time did it happen? From what I'm aware of, no time was given, which is unfortunate because this is a major like event. Because if it is truly Monday, this happened early on. This is the beginning, the day of Noah's end. So could any of these guys, Colton, Travis or the skinny guy, have been present around Noah, walked past him, bumped into him at some point and things escalated? Upon early in the morning, possibly taking beer, Caden witnessing it but being too drunk to really do or say anything, which is a bit of a contradiction to how Caden said at 10.30 the night before Sunday that he sobered up. Well, really, I guess he didn't unless he decided to drink again after 10.30, but the cousin still would have been there in between all that because it was 2.42 when the news came about that the cousin was successfully returned back home safely because just before 2.42, the cousin and a friend end up leaving anyway and Caden wasn't fully aware of that, I think. But he's not Superman, he can't do everything. Uh, um, so I'm not blaming or saying anything bad there. But can you see how it's a little bit messy in a way, the timeline? But you can see how also important it really is. Early in the morning, going to the house, returning... That's why it's important. And to take beer. At that time, close to, you know, the beginning of the end for Noah Presgrove and where alcohol can be detrimental to people's behaviour and how it can lead to things escalating, getting violent, aggressive and whatnot. Just enhances it all, makes it worse. Now, from what we've heard maybe other times or briefly by Colton Newton, that's, you know, completely contradicted himself in recent time, which is really a bad look. But at least for JJ Bumpass, in a Snapchat conversation with a stranger claiming to be friends of Noah Presgrove reaching out to Colton, mentioned about a phone ping of JJ's, pinging, not bumping, but pinging at the house. And I said, yep, yeah, there you go. And Colton said, yes, true, that's what happened. And then recently Colton said, well, yeah, I said it, but I don't know if it was really true or not. Well, poor language used, right? Doesn't make it, it doesn't, doesn't make the situation helpful, does it? It just makes it more complex. But in terms of Travis Monson, well, Caden, said he saw Travis Monson Sunday, Monday morning, more so Monday morning possibly, at the party house. And Colton is the one saying, well, no, Travis wasn't there because he was with me. And yet Caden Pressy says, on the same day at the same time, when returning back to get some beer, those three wise guys involving Colton Newton, Travis Monson, well, if Colton himself says, well, Travis wasn't there, he was with me, but you were at the party, then Travis would be with you, so you're at the party together. Duh! Stupid, isn't it? But who was that skinny guy along with Colton and Travis then with what Caden referred to? I guess Caden may have not known the person's name. Possibly a stranger. Who knows? But, you know, the closer these events are and certain people showing up closest to the time or the beginning of Noah's final hours makes you think, what did happen? If only we knew a time as in when these three guys returned back to the house to get alcohol 
And then what did they do? Stay at the house? Drink? Did they leave? Did they walk away? Were they going to get into a vehicle? Did they come across Noah at any point? Was there a confrontation? Who knows? If an exact time was given, let's say near to 3.30 or later, then I would start thinking, oh yes, this is definitely um, getting a bit dark, in my opinion, right? We've done a lot of talking, but how does it compare to what we've heard here? Well, at least with some key time stamps, which were originally mentioned after asking for a lift home, Caden Pressey at around two in the morning said he went to sleep. But I said before going to sleep, he was aware of who was awake, as I mentioned some names before. The next time when Caden uh, was woken up was by Alicia Lee making a call to Caden at 2.42am. Um, that call was to confirm that Caden's cousin was safely, successfully returned back home because it had to be picked up along the highway because of, um, you know, being driven by a friend or getting a lift elsewhere and it being a bit dodgy, so stepping on in parents and sorting it all out. Not a big issue. But basically, and as well, I believe Jack Newton gave the same timestamp, so there's a bit of consistency, I think, that 2.42 or just before that, well, it would have been just before that actually, is when the cousin made it back home, which is still before, you know, what happened with Noah. Noah dying after and bad things happening, so the cousin wouldn't have seen anything, not a witness from the looks of it. Now, after 2.42... Obviously, Caden being woken up by the phone call, he's looking about and he said he saw Jasmine Milan, Jack Newton, no Presgrove near the beer pong table. As for other people, not really much reference made, but still, key individuals such as Noah, of course, were alive, awake and well. And then close to three in the morning, Caden Pressey went back to sleep. The next prominent timestamp was 5.15 in the morning, woken up by Jack Newton announcing Noah Presgrove's death. How does that line up with this one? More of an original timeline. Well, it gets very, very problematic, right? Because whilst it's really important learning about Colton Newton, Travis Monson and a skinny guy being present at the house, especially returning back to get alcohol, drunk already or becoming drunk afterwards, maybe crossing paths with Noah, which could escalate, is that 2 to 3 in the morning, 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., Jasmine Millan said that Noah Presgrove walked off and no search was done. Now, you could say that's a bit of a contradiction if you to somehow try and excuse it and link it back to what Sarah Long stated by saying, oh, well, you know, Noah is normally known to wander off and, you know, he did it the night before, didn't he? And you lot, you, your friends, you, you went looking for Noah and you retrieved him back to the house. Well, it can't be the same link here because no search was done in this regard. But what other time did Noah walk off? Now, Caden did say in this interview, particularly the June one, that it was normal for Noah to wander off when drunk and stuff, but he would always return back. Same thing what Jasmine Milan said, but Jasmine Milan got heavily questioned at the time, but since there's been a bit more consistency to balance it out, and even Sarah Long as well to an extent. But still, for no search to be conducted, even though at some point the party goers said that they were searching for Noah because they couldn't find him, some gave up and others were maybe a little bit perplexed. But still, not, not enough concern or worry. But that's a big time frame difference. Two to three in the morning. Jasmine Milan claiming that's when Noah walked off. What? Because let's not forget a key prominent timestamp where a lot of the main events occurred. I put it down here because this is kind of like from Jack Newton's timeline. And I know it's probably not a good comparison because he might lie more than a monkey does hiding a stash of bananas under his bottom. But never mind. Three in the morning onwards. The plus means onwards. Okay. 
because 3.30 is the time when Noah supposedly walked off and never seen again. So 3 a.m. Caden um, supposedly going back to sleep, right? So he probably would have missed out on the side-by-side -side rollover, the shower situation, and even the sleeping debacle, even though there probably would have been a couple of arguments if insults were thrown about, right? But this is where it becomes a problem. First of all, we are skipping ahead. 3.30 a.m., Noah walked off away from the house, never to be seen again. And yet, if it's to do with the Jasmine Milan situation when announcing that Noah is missing, if it links to the one here, that 2 to 3 in the morning, Jasmine Milan says that Noah Presgrove walked off, this is at, at least at the maximum 30 minute time difference and if not that beyond like a one hour maybe plus time difference how vague can you get oh between two in the morning to three in the morning is when Noah Presgrove walked off that's what Jasmine Milan said was that Noah walking off around that time and then returning back and then getting in a, the side-by-side, -side, rolling over, and then having a shower, then, ha then having the sleeping arrangements debacle, and then walking off again? Or is this just one particular event, the event of walking off never to be seen again? Because if it's the one-off event of walking away, never to be seen, and yet it's happened an hour earlier, yet Jack Newton is claiming it actually happened at 3.30... And what, what is Jasmine Milan doing saying two to three in the morning is when Noah walked off? When Jasmine bloody Milan was the one that said at 3.41, oh, well, Noah's missing, I guess. You know, the 3.41 a.m. timestamp made more sense, and it was proven because of the timestamp itself with the Snapchat post, hallelujah, that made sense. And it kind of linked on with what Jack was saying, that at 3.30, Noah walked away. 10, 11 minute time difference. Jasmine Milan going out onto the front, maybe to search about or just to announce the news that Noah's missing. But if it's true from what Caden Pressey said in his interview, from what's been relayed onto him from Jasmine Milan, but it was actually at least 30 minutes earlier, if not an hour plus earlier, when Noah walked away, then what's Jasmine Milan announcing at 3.41? Oh, he's missing now. Why not do it earlier on? You see what I'm saying? Unless Noah walked off a bit earlier, then came back, then the normal, normal events followed, and then he walked off again. But constantly walking away, even if it is normal for him to do, is it normal to do it that often in a short space of time? when considering Noah supposedly wanted to leave earlier on, and yet no one would take him home. And I heard some talks online, I can't remember how true it is, that Noah tried calling his father for a lift back home. He wanted to get home, but the father was drinking, so chose not to answer the call or something. So really, Noah didn't have much chance. But if Noah was desperately trying to find ways and opportunities to get home, no wonder why he might have walked off in between to either cool off, or he was getting a little bit uncomfortable. Right? Because there's a difference between wanting to leave and needing to leave. So, this is where it gets really messy. Because depending on the time of when Noah truly walked off for the very last time, whether that be 3.30 or 2 in the morning, there is a big time difference in between. Because if Noah walked off for good at 2 in the morning, up to 3 in the morning, what happens with the shower situation? What happens with the side-by-side -side and the sleeping debacle? It brings everything forwards earlier. And it just messes everything up. That's the problem. And that's why I'm doing this side-by-side -side comparison. I know it might still be quite complex, but there's just a lot of events going on. Two in the morning, The when I say original timestamp, I'm referring to the very first one, what we heard, which is the latest one, technically, from Partners in True Crime, their public interview with Caden. Two in the morning, Caden Pressy goes to sleep. Fine, 
42 minutes later, woken up by his mum calling Alicia Lee regarding the cousin returning back safely. And in that time, being aware and alert of who's awake, who's around, who's present, including Noah Presgrove of all people, and even Jack, etc. And then close to three in the morning, going back to sleep, and then the next time round, being woken up at 5.15. That is a pretty simple timeline. And things that happened in between 3 in the morning to 3.42, maybe 4 in the morning onwards, Caden would have been completely oblivious of because he was asleep, right? But it's not that simple. Because with the timeline what we've seen in recent time, which is slightly older by a month's difference, there are additional details in between. Supposedly Monday morning, when all are asleep, as Caden words it, so him himself, are we saying two in the morning, roughly? Around 2 a.m. onwards is when Colton, Travis, skinny guy, returned back to the house because they were there earlier on Sunday or Saturday. Now, Colton Newton said he did go to the party on a Saturday, didn't return on the Sunday because he was told off by Jack for talking to Carter, the girlfriend. No flirting, just talking. How true is that? Who knows? But Colton then said, more so in recent time, that he never even went to the party in the first place, yet he admitted it in the Snapchat. So he's basically a liar. So you can't really trust what comes out of his mouth for the most part of it. But there is still some truth in what he says by acknowledging he did go to the party the first time round on the Saturday. And Caden has acknowledged it by saying they returned back to the house, meaning they were there either earlier on or the day before. So it's not the first time round. It's not the first rodeo. Taking bear... Is that allowed or what? I mean, they probably think it's a good time because if everyone else is asleep, we can go and take the bear and enjoy it ourselves. But where did they go after taking the bear? And at what time exactly? Around the time of when Jasmine Milan supposedly said that that's when Noah walked off between two and three in the morning? Hmm? I wonder. But what needs to be acknowledged, because whilst I've gone in deep enough there, we need to highlight some of the you know, key points down here, that at 2.40 a.m., that's two minutes before Caden Pressey was woken up by Alicia Lee, that phone call. How close that is, right? But at 2.40 a.m., I believe the timestamp of a video that Caden Pressey saw, at what time did Caden actually see the video? It probably would have been day a day or days later, maybe more so onwards. But at least the timestamp of the video was explained at 2.40 Monday morning. Very interesting. Two minutes before Caden woke up to Alicia Lee's call. The side-by-side, -side, the rollover. Noah Presgrove actually got hurt from it. And he saw and Caden saw the video. And that Noah had a bloodied nose. But that was all. So it comes across as if it reinforces the footage, which we've heard in the past about it being somewhere. Caden saw it himself. Well, that's a positive. So what Caden describes about the video, people should be more likely to believe in. So people in the past that were probably rushing around thinking that the side-by-side -side is a cover-up and it's the actual death of Noah. Well, Caden said he saw Noah relatively okay, just had a bloodied nose, and then I guess proceeded on to go to have a shower. But what it does do, by saying at 2.40 in the morning is when the side-by-side -side rolled over, that's actually in between the timestamp of when Jasmine Milan said Noah walked off. 2.40, that's at least 20 minutes apart from the maximum 3 a.m. timestamp in which Jasmine Milan said round that point when Noah walked off. So at the end of the day that side by side at 2.40 contradicts what Jack was stating roughly about it being 3 to 3.30 in, in, you know, in that period of time is when the side by side occurred and some other stuff. Now previously We've heard other mentions, and it's been a complete mess. About, oh, no, the side-by-side -side occurred Sunday night. And then others say, no, it happened Monday morning. It seems to be Monday morning, but as for the timing, some say three in the morning onwards, which would be a time of when Caden would have been asleep, at least from the original timeline of what we've heard of. But 
Now we're hearing it as 2.40 a.m., which is much earlier on. Does that mean that Jack Newton lied about the side-by-side -side at 3 a.m. onwards? It comes across like that once again, doesn't it? It doesn't look too good. Now, if the side-by-side -side occurred earlier on, then it would mean the shower occurred earlier on and probably the sleeping debacle earlier on. It has a chain effect. You pull one, all the others get pulled closer. And the closer it's pulled forwards earlier on in the day or going into the night before, the closer it gets to when supposedly Colton, Travis and the skinny guy returns back to the house. Were those guys present to see the side-by-side -side roll over? I wonder, were any of those guys passengers? Because no names, I believe, were really given, if I can remember. Hmm. Now, anything else? Yeah, 2.42 a.m. Alicia Lee calls Caden Pressey. Caden Pressey wakes up. So that's a consistent timestamp at least. 2.42 in the morning with what's mentioned in the original timestamp analysis. So that's one good thing at least. But... The other major difference is, when you look at the original timestamp, it's, uh, well, Caden said he went to sleep close to three in the morning. Now, take into consideration, it was actually mentioned a lot clearer in the past as a Facebook statement before he did the interview that Caden said he went to sleep at three in the morning, right? Okay. Well, as for the original timeline from Caden, that would still tie in line with the time times provided by Jack Newton, as in when the rollover happened, the shower and all that. Hence why Caden didn't witness it, because Caden was back to sleep by the time it came about. Problem is, the private interview isn't that simple, because when we go back here... Caden said at around 3.20 a.m., Caden Pressey assumed he saw Noah Presgrove alive. He didn't truly know if he was there or not. He just assumed he was there, which isn't good, to be honest. I mean, you can't blame him, but to assume, and yet in the Partners in True Crime interview, to state that Noah was a, a, alive and awake at three in the morning... Not only have the timestamps changed about here, as in when Caden was going back to sleep, but also the confidence or the certainty has changed too. In the formal private interview, Caden says, I assumed that Noah was there, but I don't truly know. But then in the public Partners in True Crime interview, oh yeah, Cade, um, Noah was still alive, awake, he was still there, playing beer pong or near to the beer pong table with Jack Newton, Jasmine Miller. There's a difference, isn't there? And the big part is about going back to sleep. Partners in true crime, Caden says he went to sleep near to three in the morning. His Facebook statement states that too. And yet, in his private interview, 20 minutes later, that's actually when he went to sleep. A 20 minute time difference when it's getting even closer to the original timestamp of Noah's outcome and demise makes it critical because the longer it takes for Caden to go back to sleep, the closer it is to those supposed events taking place, which led up to Noah's death, meaning Caden could have seen more or heard more if he stayed awake longer. And that's what I'm just trying to work out here. Unless it's a massive twist and it's all turned about upside down, but if by some weird chance that in between 2 to 3 in the morning, when Caden was asleep at some point at least, from 2 to 2.42, that's when Noah walked off. And then by the time 3 in the morning came about, or more so just after 2.42, when Caden Pressey woke up, and then 20, 30 minutes passing by of Caden Pressey being awake, doing what exactly, then drifting off back to sleep... Oh, by then, Noah's already been disposed of, killed and everything. Oh, the shower situation's already happened. Oh, this has already happened. It can't be. Because then it clashes with that 2.40am side-by-side rollover. Because of that particular timestamp, it makes me think back to, yeah, maybe Noah walked off in between 2 to 3 in the morning and then returned back to the party house. 
And then after three in the morning, what, decided to get into the side-by-side? -side? Well, that can't be true either, because at 2.40, that's when, that's when the video supposedly happened. Now, unless that's the time of when Caden saw it, and it was actually recorded even earlier before that, either way, it's just a fucking disaster, right? Because you look at Jack Newton's timeline from 3 to 3.30... It feels like there's like an order of events, how it could play out. But then when looking at Caden Pressis, from what he knows or what he's been told by, such as Jasmine Millan, two to three in the morning, Noah Presgrove walking off. And then what? 3.30? 30, 30 minutes later, walking off again, but never to be seen ever? You get what I'm saying? But... Is there any way where there's like a flow between the two different timelines? Two to three in the morning, Noah walks off, but probably before three in the morning. It would have to be before 3 a.m. in the morning in order for the 2.40 side-by-side -side rollover to occur where uh, Noah Presgrove is present, but Caden is asleep. So let me just try and work this out on the spot, just to see if we can... Even though there's not enough consistency, just to see if we can get a form of understanding. So let's say 2 a.m. it's true that Caden Pressy goes to sleep and some of the other guys are asleep as well. Maybe. And at 2 in the morning when Caden is asleep, completely unaware, that's the time of when Noah walks off. But Noah walking off before, before 2.30 and returning back to the house before 2.40. So, 10 to 20 minutes away from the place doing what exactly, who knows. And during that time, Caden is asleep. Then when 2.42 comes about, 2.42 comes about, Caden Press is woken up by Alicia Lee's call. And then whilst Caden, then after that, is probably trying to get back to sleep, but it takes some time. Caden Pressy says he saw Noah Presgrove, even though here, it's at a much later time of 3.20, when he assumed that he saw Noah alive and present at the party, but not fully sure. We've jumped again in time, so you can't get that, that good flow behind it. Not really, in my opinion. 2.42... When Noah wakes up, 2.40 when the side-by-side -side rollover occurs. Well, if at 2.40 the side-by-side -side rollover occurs and two minutes later Caden wakes up and yet he didn't see or hear anything and yet round it up to 3.20 a.m. from 2.40 of when the side-by-side -side rollover took place supposedly to 3.20 in the morning, there was more than enough time in between that for Noah to dust himself off, to walk into the house and maybe to have a shower, and Caden would have been awake during that time if it's true that Caden Pressy went to sleep at 3.20 and not 3 in the morning. Even if it's true that Caden went to sleep at 3 in the morning, but the side-by-side -side took place at 2.40, um, you know, there's, there's still time in between. Because how long does it take to roll over and then to get out and then roll it back over again on its normal side and then to then go inside and then have a shower? From 2.40 to 3 in the morning... What's that? Uh, 50 and then 3. That's like a 20 minute time difference from 2.40 to 3 in the morning. And Caden woke up 2 minutes after 2.40 and then went to sleep close to 3 in the morning from his original Partners in True Crime interview. And in between that time it would have taken 20 minutes for Caden to go back to sleep and in between all that going gone, it wouldn't have taken 20 minutes to flip the vehicle back over and then go back inside to the shower. I think that would have been done a bit quicker, don't you think? Or could it have taken 20 minutes to resolve that? I'm just thinking because if they were waffling and dragging things out outside, by the time of when Kane and Pressy actually got to sleep, he could have missed out on the event again, which is very unfortunate. You know, you just drift off to sleep and that's when supposedly Noah wanders off shortly afterwards. Then when you wake back up, He's back at the place at some point. And then when you go back off to sleep again, he's he's not there or an event takes place. Oh, it's, it's too messy. 
I don't like I don't like how this is, but it's like raw. I want to know if anyone does follow it, understands it. This is like first time me doing it, and I'm trying to do a comparison in the same order as how things followed, but because of these timestamps being different to how Caden Pressy has worded it, in, in between a month's difference apart, from June to July, it kind of turns everything upside down in a way, right? Pre-20, Caden Pressy assumes he saw no press grave alive, back to sleep. But, to be honest, if that's true, at 3.20, Caden Pressy isn't too sure whether Noah is present or not, but I just assume so. 3.20, and yet it's 3.30, where Jack said that's when Noah walked off. It's only a 10-minute time difference. I'm just surprised that Caden can wake up, then drift off to sleep, wake up, drift off to sleep, and not be woken up within the, the few minutes, unless a heavy sleeper. You know what I'm saying? You know, well, it, just like me, go to sleep, but not immediate, so I can hear things. I could be woken up in between. And then at some point, I might wake up, still night, and then I'm trying to go back to sleep, drifting off, but it takes some time, and in between that, there's noises, and then I wake up again. But if you can drift off in and out of sleep very quickly, then you could be excused for missing out on certain events. But if it really was 3.20 when Caden actually went, back to sleep for the last time only to then be waking up hours later at 5.15. It's only a 10 minute difference of when Noah supposedly truly walked off never to be seen again as stated by Jack Newton and if that's false information and that actually Noah walked off earlier does that link to what Jasmine was getting at the 2 to 3 in the morning? No that has to be its own little event a separate one but earlier on because at 2.40 Noah was back at the place and in that side-by-side -side rollover supposedly based off that timestamp given and video footage recorded of the event and yet Caden didn't see it because he was asleep but the time it took for him to go back off to sleep there would have been enough time in between that a, ten, a 20 minute time difference of going back to sleep and a 20 minute time difference of that side-by-side -side rollover being uh, rectified and then Noah walking into inside the building to then go to the show I'm surprised uh, I'm surprised Caden didn't see Noah walk past him with a bloodied nose right I hope that makes a bit more sense now what happened after that point um Jasmine Milan and Carter Combs washed Noah Presgrove. Caden was told that by one of the girls after six in the morning. So it's around the time when Jasmine Milan, not Jasmine Milan, Renee Milan, the mother, came on down. So it's like post-death, post-news of Noah's passing. Okay, But I think I've just put it there in that order because it was the order of when the event took place. But a but upon hearing about it, that was talked about afterwards. But it seems to be in line possibly with the timing of uh, Jack's potential timestamp to an extent. Now we're going to have a shower. Some online seen it as a cover-up, hiding evidence, but at least how it's worded here by Caden and what he's seen from the video, Noah was okay to an extent but still needed a shower and maybe a shower to wash that blood away from his nose. If he had a bloodied nose, was it broken? Was it a burst blood vessel? And was there any more damage sustained? We don't know because we've not actually seen the public footage, which probably never will do, which is unfortunate. Now, once again, it seems to be slightly in the wrong order, which is absolutely stupid. But... After 3.20 a.m. and after the shower and after the sleeping debacle of whatever time that occurred at, it was 3.41 a.m., the original, which Caden made a reference to in his private interview that you had Jasmine Milan with a wet shirt. That's to do with the Snapchat. That's to do with the party house where she was stood on the front patio porch saying, well, Noah's missing. Right. So Jasmine Milan at 3.41 does a Snapchat post saying, well, Noah is missing. But in between 2 in the morning to 3 in the morning, where supposedly Noah wandered off earlier on but made it back still, there was no need for Jasmine to make an announcement then, but only later when Noah walked off a final time. 
that's how it comes across. Is it consistent with what we've seen here? If I did actually mention it, back to sleep. Uh, I didn't mention it here, but I believe it is consistent then. The 341 would be consistent and it has to be consistent because it was actually documented on the Snapchat post, which we've seen publicly. And if Caden Pressey acknowledges that, then it must be even more consistent, to be honest. Even if Caden Pressey didn't acknowledge it, but the Snapchat does, that's more than enough. So basically off that line of thought, even though we haven't seen the footage, for Caden to say he saw the video of the side-by-side -side rollover and it said 2.40, that must be the time of when it happened. But 2.40 a.m. is a lot earlier on it happening compared to when Jack said it happened 3 in the morning onwards and other people did online too. So then, what's the time difference between 2.40 side-by-side -side rollover and the actual shower? And then what's the time difference between that and the actual sleeping arrangements then? And then what's the actual time of when Noah actually walked off? Because it sounds like it's all coming earlier, so 3.30... It might have been 3.20 when Noah walked off, or a bit before that. But it has to be at a time when Caden Pressey was asleep. If he's not asleep, surely he would have seen Noah walk by or walk off. Now, I think the party house only has one floor, correct me if I'm wrong, unless there's an attic. As for the bathroom shower, is that downstairs? Because if so, I'm sure Noah would have walked past Caden at some point to get from point A to point B. Caden would have had to have been asleep to have not been able to see, hear, or recall it. Hmm. Yeah, this is a little bit problematic, in my opinion. So, yeah. And then at 5.15, Jack Newton announces no Presgrove's death, which is obviously consistent with the star item, as in that one. There, 5.15. Then, in terms of the highway, we don't really need to get too much into that. Basically, it's pretty much... The same, no really big issues there. Next time being 6.30, Rene Milan, her husband, Stephanie Milan and boyfriend arrived. The timing of it has a question mark because from what I remember, Caden Pressey did not give a time in his private interview with the police as to what time Rene Milan and the group, the family, arrived. But in Partners in True Crime interview, Caden did give a time, 6.30 in the morning, and even the time of when they left, 7 in the morning. And even a reference to Rene spending 30 minutes at the highway before coming on down to the party house. None of that was mentioned in the private interview with the police, from what I remember hearing. So that's very weird. Because you thought it would have been the other way around because key details like that should be given to the police and not so much to the public. But things happen. The only difference is more names were included in the hat to the police than publicly. Publicly, Kane said Rene Milan and only Rene arrived. Yet in the police interview, Kane said Rene Milan and the husband and Stephanie Milan, I guess the daughter. And the boyfriend of Stephanie Milan came. It's like a, a family outing in a way. But I only heard about that in the private interview. I would never have known from the Partners in True Crime one. So it's interesting how extra names and extra details have been added in. But it's what you would expect with a private interview compared to a public one. Not everything can be talked about publicly. But when it comes to timestamps, that seems to be a major issue. So from the video that I've done today, if it could be cleared up, that would be good. I know the text is a bit all over the place, but let me just go down slowly. If you want to pause the video, this is the original timestamp given, roughly summarised by Kanan Pressey in the Partners in True Crime interview, for most part of it, and the key times along the way. And to be honest, it actually made sense in my opinion, right? And it kind of linked on as well to uh, Jack Newton's, in a way. Because by those times, Caden was already asleep, so he wouldn't have seen anything. But from what we've heard of here in the private one, it's just a little bit, well, it's quite different, to be honest. Extra details, extra times, okay? So hopefully it's clear enough the order it is in. 
maybe the odd one is slightly above the other when it should be below, but that's just Google spazzing out. But this particular timestamp timeline does not link on and doesn't quite make sense with Jax. So there's conflict. Two different timelines by Caden Pressy, realistically speaking. After looking at that, hopefully people don't take it in a negative way or see it as being too critical of Caden Pressy. He's doing what he can by just simply doing a public interview from Partners in True Crime perspective and it's public, that's all good. But realistically, and I'm being realistic as possible, making valid observations with common sense to say you went to sleep at 3 a.m. or close to 3 a.m. but then previously to say you went to sleep 20 minutes after that there's a difference isn't there and whilst we can talk about memory being lost with time is there, is there much room for memory loss within a space of a month or just under a month I can understand collectively holistically speaking from when it happened back in 2023 to more so present day it would be harder to recall events Maybe what's ultimately needed for that full consistency is instead of just monitoring and measuring the June and July timestamps being recalled from 2023, if the October interview was revealed as well. Now, it probably will never be revealed because not like in terms of a miracle, but it's kind of a miracle, but more so ma uh, ma masked. Well, it's not masked. A nightmare masked as a miracle to some people when learning about the truth of the case and additional details along the way because from the looks of it, Caden Pressy, Alicia Lee and others did not want it being released publicly. And unfortunately for them, it was some way or another. But to the general public, kind of a miracle in people's own mindsets because it's a way of learning more when normally you wouldn't be able to. So to have that chance, it's good. But for the people involved, it's not good for them. And probably for the case, it doesn't help either. It is what it is. It's happened now. But the October one, if the October interview 2023, the freshest one out there, closer to when all the events took place with Noah, better memory, you would think. I wonder what the details and the timestamps were there. Do they differ greatly to 2024 of June and July? Or is it similar? That would be the ultimate way of knowing, for sure. A lot of people have said Caden Pressy is consistent, consistent, consistent. Yeah, up to a certain point, but like demonstrated in today's video, it's not that consistent. There's reasons to understand why it isn't, and it's not Caden's fault, but just being realistic, one says 3 in the morning, another one says 3.20. But then, it's not just Caden you're focusing on. Jack Newton being a problem too because then it conflicts with Jack Newton's timeline of when the time of when Noah actually walked off and the fact that Caden didn't see it. It would have to be a certain time for Caden to be asleep, to not witness, to not see, to not hear. And in terms of the timeline, unfortunately no time was given, just the day only of Travis Monson, Colton Newton and a skinny guy returning back to the house to get alcohol, who may or may not be involved in the outcome of Noah's outcome. At what time did that happen? Before or after Noah walked off, or before or after Noah walked off for the final time? It's a bit of a mess, but it's needed this. Even if it's a bit of a problem, even if it gives you a headache, this is a good thing. You might wonder why, okay? Is it a good thing for me at the moment? Kind of, because I'm currently tied up, literally, physically speaking. Sharon will even tell you in the chat right now. Can't do anything, okay? Can I go, please? Miss Sharon, Miss Sharon Ash, even though I called you Nash in the past, Nashville, oops. Can I please... Go? No. See, this is what happens when the tables turn. The handcuffs lead to this, and I'm on the receiving end. I'm supposed to be the doctor, and yet I'm the one that's stuck. Who's going to unstuck me? Is that a word? I don't know, but at least I said the right word, at least. Or a word, that's correct. Appropriate, I mean. Anyway, you might think the doctor, what the fuck, the doctor, doctor who, doctor what? Well, we'll be getting to that later because I did say there was an issue that needed to be looked into. So don't go anywhere. Anyone lurking right now, 
you stay right where you are. If you need refreshments or you need to go to the toilet, obviously you can do that. You're not held against your will, unlike me. But anyway, just to refer back to the timelines, much constraints around them. Just seems a little bit loose. I just need a little bit more consistency. I mean, how often can we say we've seen a full timeline by all the other party goers? We can't. I might have seen a comment here and there somewhere on Facebook or maybe YouTube has said, yeah, but other people have complied with uh, police and talks in the background. And they might have come online as well and defended themselves at times. But they've, have they given a full statement, full timeline of events? No. Just imagine if Isaac, Brylan, Mikey, maybe some others as well, all gave like the same level of depth as Caden has in terms of a timeline format. Would that ever happen? I don't know. With partners in true crime, obviously, he's taken a step back publicly. It's less likely for those interviews and that style, even though it was done well by them. And it depends if those particles are willing to do the same and speak as much as Caden did. Maybe they won't do. Maybe they can't. Maybe they're scared. Who knows? But if there was more people that could do what Caden Pressy did, you'd have more timelines to work with. Yes, it could be more messy and complex, but still more to work with. But just take into consideration, even when you've got limited materials, okay? For Sharon, no issue there. Wardrobe, no, 10 wardrobes. Can't even breathe inside of them, full of clothes. How would I know? I don't. But talking of hiding in closets, that was a reference used by Stephanie Bacon, which just so happens to link on later with unlocking this. Anyway, these little links and references keep reminding me of what I should be getting into, but I need to hold myself back. I don't have to hold myself back. I'm already held back by Sharon. All these references, God damn it. But in all seriousness, as messy as it may be, and with somewhat limited material, it's still messy. How is that even possible? Just because of these contradictions, just because of the lack of the, in, uh, the consistencies and the timestamps changing, which then affects the other timestamp before and afterwards, and then has a knock-on effect. You think you got it all laid out fine, and then one is adjusted, and then it screws everything else up. You get what I'm saying? That's why I didn't go too heavy with the timelines in the past, because I have to keep redoing it, re-editing, and it'd just be too much. But still, even though it's weird to think that you've got limited material, and yet it's still so messy, it's good like this, because it's to do with the case. It's about the case. And to go through it may help the case, or at least understand it. And considering what's happened in recent time, very recently, with certain individuals, um, people may need this as a distraction. And to be honest, just to refer back very, very, very briefly, whilst the odd person may be in the doghouse, <laughs> when it comes to Dina Rose, I thought Dina Rose was supposed to be dealt with by people on certain websites as admins supposedly kicked off or silenced, and they're still posting. I mean, that's just an observation from me, because you see post made by them, could be misleading, could be damaging the case, or harming people's hope, getting people's hopes up, and then being let down afterwards, but still being around, still being around to keep on going, or even talk, but then maybe another individual, at a certain point in time, could just be executed immediately without any time to explain. Even if it was a load of bollocks, just no time to explain. Because I'm just talking in general here. Do you know when it comes to the level of patience, when it comes to maybe dodgy people within this case, within the case, they may be given a platform, they may be given a time to speak, to explain themselves. And even if they do give out threats and bad behaviour, threats which can harm the case or put other people's lives in danger. It's not scamming, it's pure threats. And yet they're still around to hang about. They're not blocked, they're not kicked. They get the chance. So why don't others? Do you know for that full balance? Some people could get a little bit, you know, sassy, shake the head, but, you know, I'm Mr. Bobblehead. Okay, if you didn't know already, 
is that when I try to demonstrate balance, you know what the definition of balance is? Is when you stick around long enough that you become the villain and the black sheep at the same time because you have questioned almost anyone and everyone and people have got offended by it. But that's what balance is. If you don't do that, it's basically just going after one or two people, which is then a witch hunt. If you talk about the definition of being realistic, it's to the point where the general public population of positive uh, pissheads will beg you to be just a little bit delusionally positive, right? I've got many other sayings and quotes within my scriptures, but it's just not the right time to reveal them. But if you're going to have balance and you're going to have patience it needs to be almost all around it's like my channel to an extent to the best as i can there might be some negative people with time there might be some key characters which have got some things to say but at least allow them to do it so they can get off their chest but also so we can document the human behavioral changes within people it's very important that now my reasoning behind the uh, dodgy people maybe within the case still being allowed a platform or a space to talk and grow on certain cases or discussion pages it's because it's important and relevant to the case you want to keep your enemies closer than your friends so then you can watch over them and see what their next move is or what they say next if you banish them brush them away it's going to make the case harder to look at and harder to track those people within it so i can understand that patience there if if you get a bad person doing bad things, but they're not linked with the case exactly, you might think, well, they're troublesome. We don't need a person like that. And we don't need to keep them around because we don't need to monitor them because they're not linked or relevant to the case. But the other bad people that have done worse things who have been more threatening, maybe we keep them around because they're tied within the case and we need to keep them close for it to benefit us in learning about the case and solving it. See, this is the reasoning ability which other humans may lack, but someone needs to highlight it. And anyway, most of this video has been focused on the case alone. I mean, there was one comment recently where someone said, I think it was something Arnold, the only one that looks like this, but it's actually a funeral instead. You know, that one. Um that said that I was endorsing a dodgy person. How can I be endorsing a dodgy person when 99% of the time of my videos are focused on this case specifically about Noah Presgrove at hand? And then the miscellaneous ones along the way are different, but that's just small scale stuff, very casual and um, unrelated to the case. So some weird comments. There might be a wave, there might be a backlash, and it is sad, it sounds very vague, but it's for good reason. Basically, reality is, from predictions in the past, can come a backlash of where I suddenly become attacked kind of randomly. But if it does, well, it's kind of happened in the past. See, in the past with the Dylan Rounds case, what happened there is exactly what's happening here. So I know exactly how things can go and the life cycles behind them even when it's not actually a part of the case but it gets dragged within it hmm? and how people react respond how ties i can't even click i spazzed out there we go a bit better how it's cut like that short and very abrupt and during abrupt and moments there's a lot to take in and yet this video was done was deep and done at the right time but what i do need to do myself right now from what i'm aware of is cover a particular situation which isn't directly about the case but it involves a possible person within the case okay before i do that what's that sharon you want me to bark like a dog <laughs> what else do you want me to do you want me to get on all fours and do the downward dog? No? Oh, that's what you do. Yeah, because you practice yoga. I don't because I'm flexible enough, girl. Well, am I? Actually, I am. If you look back on my channel and you go to the playlist, there's one where I bend backwards in a dodgy way where you could think I could tear my ACL or tear my back, tear my bottom. It's all under control. It's all documented. 
as a heads up, if anyone does watch it and gets confused by what's sticking out from the side, that's a plastic bottle. I had it in my pocket at the time because I was getting very thirsty because I kept having to retry the activity, but I got there in the end. But if you want some flexibility ref, flexible ref, well, you'll be able to see it for yourself. And sorry, Sharon, if you do get jealous, it is what it is, okay? Ow, okay, calm down. Oh, now I've got to bark like a dog. Great, because I've been on bad behavior, supposedly. Okay, then. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Come on, Sharon, stop making me bark like a dog. You're going to get everybody's audience members' pets barking as well. I'm sure people don't want that because it gets noisy and it might awake people. Who knows? No, I'm not going to bark again, Sharon. Okay, one more time. That's enough. If I bark any more, I can imagine Mistress Vanessa Salazar will come along and snatch me up. I'll probably get kidnapped because they think I'm a dog. Right? We don't want that. We don't want another dog going missing. Who let the dogs out? Not Raph. It was Vanessa. My goodness. Right? So, for anyone wondering, Jesus Christ, Sharon, how tight have you made this? Have you seen how red that's got? And you were the one complaining about having red swollen hands. You've already made my neck red and you've not even started. Fuck me. Not literally. Not yet. Shh. Anyway, in terms of if I do go quiet, if I do disappear, you know why. This colour, the voice, I could be mistaken for a dog. If it isn't Vanessa who's already thought I'm a dog to begin with. Because if, if word gets about, because it might have already or already with other stuff, but if word gets about that Vanessa Salazar knows that I'm a dog, I'm probably going to be the next one that gets pulled away. Whoa. Calm down. Do not try this at home. I am a professional when it comes to things wrapped around my neck. That sounds even worse, that. So, in all seriousness, to refer back to recent light-hearted videos, supposedly there has been an unhappy customer. And in terms of how we're going to do this, I'm going to give you my conclusion at the very end, and it's very important that you stick around for that full balance, that full perspective. I'd appreciate that. But we're going to go for it bit by bit. From what Stephanie Bacon, also known as the Baconator, but we're not joking around here, just literally, Stephanie Bacon, a part of certain groups within the Noah Presgrove case online, who supposedly was ill, had pain in their stomach in recent time, and because of the light-hearted videos and the recent trend of, oh, I'll do a healing video if you want it, seems like it's backfired. I'm going to show you the after effects in which what Stephanie Bacon had to say, supposedly, about me, and then we're going to compare it to supposedly the same individual on the YouTube platform and what they said there. Because there is a bit of a contrast, let's head on over. Okay, so this is the first screenshot on screen. I just wanted to take five to ten minutes just to really process everything, just so one didn't jump the gun, okay? This point of view is not from my perspective. It's been passed on to me. The text, the font may look different, but you can edit that yourself on certain settings and pages on your own phone and keyboard. No big deal. This is Facebook Messenger. I don't know if it's in a group chat or a one-on-one -on -one chat, but it involves Stephanie Bacon and another individual. And what's mentioned here is Stephanie says, Warlight Raff asked me yesterday in chat if I needed... Dr. Raff for my flu. Now, I know Stephanie Bacon says he, not Raff, but it's pretty obvious because how many other doctors are called Dr. Raff? Pretty much, right? But the context behind that, he asked me yesterday in chat if I needed a Dr. Raff. I don't know what that's in relation to exactly, if I'm going to be honest with you, because there's two events and they may not correlate, they may be separate ones. I do remember myself, four days ago, three to four days ago on YouTube, there was the live chat 
where Stephanie was commenting and I left some messages, not messages, comments. And you'll see that on the next few slides. But before that, it might have been a day or two earlier in a different chat on Facebook Messenger, a different platform, that's when Dr. Raff originally inquired about it. If that's what Stephanie Bacon is referring to, I understand. But what else is mentioned here? Stephanie says, I think that's just his character. You think? <laughs> so you're not for sure. So who, who else, honestly, who else honestly thinks that I myself will walk about with a giant syringe in one hand, a massive rolling pin in the other, and walk about the streets of the UK saying, hey there, want to get hammered with a rolling pin and flattened out and fixed with a daily checkup? Yes? Come join the line. As if I would do that. I'm a complete opposite, at least when it comes to uh, in real life. Jesus. I mean, the reality is, when you do videos, and it won't apply to everyone, but at least for me, you know, I'm not doing it in front of an audience, literally. You know, I'm recording a video with a camera. There aren't consequences in that sense of like an awkward atmosphere or nerves or, you know, like me being quiet. That doesn't have to be an issue because it's just in front of a phone, my own reflection. And yes, the screen doesn't break, so that's a positive there. But that's all it is. And then people choose to watch afterwards and choose to react in real life, no way, no way, it's too much to be, keep to myself. But what's going on here? Stephanie says, I think that he's, he likes all the attention. So without actually saying it, Stephanie Bacon is kind of insinuating that Warlight Raph could possibly be a narcissist, which is obviously very disappointing to interpret from. I said Stephanie isn't directly saying that, but to say, oh, he likes all the attention, it's not exactly a positive trait to have, I'll be honest with you. And at least uh, in real life, I don't like all the attention in that way. Does that make me a hypocrite online? Well, when it comes to online, most of the attention is putting attention on a bloody case and spreading awareness about it. And then the light-hearted or the wacky videos along the way aren't all for growth, attention and all that. It's specifically for people because there can be like a fun time, it can be a fun reaction, it can be funny to watch back and stuff in a light-hearted way. And other times, some light-hearted videos are done, not the dodgy ones, but just the light-hearted ones, the map ones, which I did in 2022, was like, just to break it up from the repetitive cycle of covering cases where it gets a bit too dark, gets a bit too negative, gets a bit too much, break it up a little bit. And sometimes do a custom video for people who are deserving of it because they've supported the channel along the way. You know? There's many different reasons, but Stephanie Bacon sees it in a certain way. But it's interesting how she says, I said, no thanks. I do not want any treatment. I do not want an appointment. And yes, that is true. Originally. But things did change. Stephanie did say, I don't know. I think he's just soaking up all the attention he can get. Once again, reconfirming indirectly that Warlike Raph is a narcissist, which is really disappointing to hear considering that, at least when it comes to, you know, how you might present yourself in real life or at least in a public setting, it's a like complete opposite. And like, I wouldn't even talk about it to be honest because the way people treat me like an alien in real life or, or just how some will react online where they'll be like, really? You've not done this, you've not done that, you've not got experience, really? Like, really being talking down to you like an alien, that's why I tend to keep my mouth shut. That's exactly what I did in high school as well. I didn't get bullied. Besides, a person that I knew for 11 plus years that just turned on me out of nowhere and some other things along the way, but it wasn't, I wasn't bullied because I kept my mouth shut, I kept my head down and so on, but... It doesn't matter where you are. And I'm talking about real life. Oh, online, it's all bad. In real life, it's just as fucked up. It doesn't matter where you are or what you do, or even if you keep your head down, if there are humans about, 
there can be trouble. It's just like playing a video game. It doesn't matter if you play an online competitive tournament in real life or in your own house. You're playing, you're competing against real humans. Humans can be problematic, and if you're around them, problems can arise. Not always guaranteed, but it can happen. If you play a single player game, story mode, no interaction, no encounters with other humans, there are going to be less issues. And that no matter what environment you play it in. But anyway, just a little bit. I mean, it could be in a light-hearted way this, but to be saying that I said no, I didn't want it, things did change. And I've got the proof to possibly back it up. As I said, I'm I'm trying to keep this as balanced as possible. Um, so, which one is this? Uh, Bumpass, feeling he doesn't fit in. So Stephanie Bacon commented like four days ago on a particular video, I believe, or three days ago. Video throws on me, had to go out and come back in. That one's not exactly relevant. This one, then. So you had Bumpass, which is actually a fake account, an impersonation, basically, of certain someone, but I'm not going to mention the name just uh, because it's not really necessary and it's not that critical. But Stephanie Bacon uses an emoji. So what's so big of a deal about this? Well, I've not acknowledged it yet because there's no proof of it. I'm going to be honest with you. There's no proof of it from what I've seen or from what I've not seen of. But as in like with talk in the background, oh, you got this screenshot here, questioning Raph, slightly negative attitude of him and out outwards look but supposedly there was back chat about me in the background that warlike raf is creepy or weird or wacky or things like that i don't know how true that is that's supposedly what's been said behind my back but is there any proof of it nope not from what i'm aware of so i'm not defending stephanie bacon but i'm not going after her either does that make sense that's what the definition of balance is I'm aware that there's other points made, but if I don't see it backed up, then I can't really say much about it. If it was on the basis that it was true that a person said that Warlight Raph is weird, creepy, or a bit dodgy in what's said, um, to be honest, doesn't it take two to tango? And if you don't have tango, two to melons, two to pineapples, whatever the fuck you've got in your fruit salad bowl. I mean, just in terms of, you know, like emojis bump ass with the... Uh, what's that giant vegetable which people use to represent a certain part of the male body? You know, that, you could say that's a bit inappropriate. You could say that's a bit naughty. Stephanie Bacon uses the peach emoji, which is genuinely, uh, generally used by females to describe the rear, whether it be their own or somebody else's. Kind of like when uh, they might, might be doing gym workouts and they're like, Hey guys, got my new clothing range. I'm going to be doing some workouts with my booty program. And then they'll just show an emoji like that. And then Bum Pass has got two cherries, which you can see where it's going. It is where it is. Now, Miriam says, oh my God, some immature. Yes, Miriam. Yes, Miriam. Shout out to Miriam. It's a good name, that. What are the origins of Miriam? And um, does it what does it trace back to? I don't know. Let's move on. And then Stephanie Bacon says Vanessa is quite capable of getting it done, Raf. So it sounds like a naughty reference, not quite clear as to what it really means, but still, there's a level of cooperation in communication. Uh, what else do we have? Moving on. Tuesday, um, I know, Stephanie Bacon says, Raph, Vanessa will rub out that sore spot from you smacking yourself. So once again, bit naughty behaviour yet again. Vanessa finds it funny. Bump ass is crying as usual. Stephanie Bacon finds it funny. CC or Sissy Bingham, who is not related to Kathy Bingham, just in case anyone was wondering, Finds it funny as well, so it seems pretty normal at the moment. Uh, what else do we have? Stephanie Bacon, I know someone else that would bite your ass, Raf. Tuesday found that funny. Vanessa, a bit scared. Sharon says, Stephanie, you are naughty. 
And Stephanie Bacon says, I sure am, Sharon. So for Stephanie Bacon to supposedly be such a naughty individual and say naughty things, yet to be quite reluctant when it comes to being inspected, no thanks, it just doesn't quite link up. Is there a possibility that the Stephanie Bacon account, what we see on YouTube, is a fake account and not the real Stephanie? It's worth taking in consideration when within this chat you had Bump Ass, which was a fake account of a certain someone. Were they doing the same to Stephanie Bacon? Was the crossed wires and a misunderstanding? I wonder. See, it's very good of me to be this understanding considering how people have been in the past. I've adapted with time. It's good. It's positive. You can take this as like an exercise, a learning curve if you want. So, do I need rubbing out? Do I have any sore spots? No, I doubt from what I'm aware of. Now, I'm sure Sharon is going to be really disappointed. Yeah, Sharon, I guess that dog collar wasn't tight enough. What are you going to do about it? Oh, one, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, get out the door. Moving on. Anyway. So, do I want my arse biting? Well, I'm okay at the moment, so... Yes, I'm okay. I don't, I'm a fine. I'm fine as I am. Um, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, so just continuation. When Sharon says, Stephanie, you are naughty. See, to be honest, to be honest, I think what needs to be done, whether it comes Christmas time or not, comes early or not, I think we need a hierarchy who's on the naughty list and who is the most naughtiest individual present at any point. Need a hierarchy, Yeah. Stephanie Bacon says, my mind lives in the gutter. Does that insinuate that Stephanie Bacon is a prostitute? I said, when you say you're living in the gutter, it sounds like a bit downgraded, out on the streets. That's how you can interpret it, okay? Not saying it's a fact, but that's how you can interpret it. Sharon finds it very funny, but this is the thing, Sharon will not be living in any gutters. I think she's in some 10-star hotel or something. My God, didn't even know it existed. It does now. Now, this is where it kind of kicks on him. So, I said, because this was to do with a different situation, supposedly with the stomach pains, and because I did previous videos where it fixed people, I thought, well, there's no harm in doing it again. So, I just simply asked. I think you're next in line for the consultation room. And that's just a joke, really. Now, Misty Clee says, Steffi, what are you doing here? I knew you would find me, bitch. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't even know Misty knew who Stephanie was. Is Steffi short for Stephanie? I remember in uh, 2022, there was a person called Steffers, but I thought it called Stiff or Stiffers. <laughs> but, you know... We can get mixed up with names. But yeah, I said about the Dr. Raff consultation room and Stephanie Bacon said, oh, I don't know about that, Raff. And I simply said, no problem. At the end of the day, it's your choice. Because at the end of the day, it's a simple, light-hearted video. And if you don't want it, then you don't have to have it. It's as simple as that. Right? It's really that simple. Now, Tuesday earlier said, Stephanie, I don't know if you've watched it, but you were in the waiting room. So that was just a reference to maybe when Tuesday was being healed. Uh, but anyway, after I said, at the end of the day, it's your choice. No pressure. Then Stephanie Bacon says, well, Raph, what comes along with this consultation? Oh, now you're interested. Hmm? And basically said, hand on skin examination plus whips. Yes, it does sound dodgy, but what do you expect when it comes to the stomach? Okay, you're messing about, but you're also trying to pretend to be a doctor. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't be saying I'm pretending to be a doctor. I thought I was. Never mind. Keep that quiet. Shh. But Stephanie Bacon responds to what the procedure can sit off and says, ooh, whips, you say. Maybe I will take that consultation. And then they give a winky face, basically meaning that they were talking naughty earlier on and now they want it. Now, that line does sound a little bit bold at that. And in other situations, it can get into a very sticky situation and a very bad one if it backfires. This is the thing. I do take it very seriously. Believe me. 
and I will upscale small scale events and uh, predict the future. That's it, it has to be done. One has to protect themselves, right? Skippy says, well, like Raph, I've changed my mind. You're not Papa Raph, you're Daddy Raph. Oh no, oh no. How many people are gonna use that line now? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Whips, you say, maybe I will take that consultation. And yet when we link it back to here, I said, no thanks, it, it's not really for me. So the person's mind changed with time. So I did the video that I did not knowing about this, but then again, if this was before this, then it's understandable. But then if it's true that there is talk in the background about me being called out or something, even though there's no proof of it, I'm just being honest, it's just a bit, a bit weird in a way. Hmm. So I just thought I would uh, just show that just as a little demonstration. Now, when it came to actually making the video under the impression that it was all okay to do so, and then publishing it, the individual never watched it, from the looks of it at least. I didn't see any comments, didn't see any reactions, nothing. Did they ignore the video? Did they purposely choose not to watch it? Did they watch it but just not react because they felt it was a bit weird? But to be honest, what do you expect? Because on the basis that a description has been given as to why it is the procedure and you agree to it and then complain afterwards, it just seems a bit, a little bit problematic in a way, personally, if it's all true based off that. But nevertheless, um, I wasn't able to tag the individual at the time because I didn't know what their username was. So I was just hoping that someone else would be able to share the video onto them. And supposedly that did happen, but it didn't seem to work out too well. So maybe an unhappy customer, but in terms of the healing process, it should have been a success. And uh, whether it was or wasn't, um, all I will say in the future, if certain humans in general ever become a bit problematic, well, I'm sure the healing can be reversed. Anyway. I just wanted to keep it pretty simple, just in case there are any misunderstandings, whether there be a fake account somewhere pretending to be on behalf of Stephanie Bacon. And, you know, this is small scale stuff, but believe me, the procedure and how it can come about and what it can lead to ends the same way, no matter the scale. It can be serious, it can be damaging, it can cause trouble. So it needs to be under control early on. That aside, the most part of this video has been quite successful when looking at the timelines. I want to know your thoughts about it because it is quite full on. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you want, feel free to like, share the video. That'd be appreciated so more people see it, spreads more awareness about the case and the importance behind the timelines, the timestamps and how it can differ from one to another by the same person. When it comes to the odd other individual out there, just a quick reference, when it comes to Micheline or Michalina, um, how do I say this? Micheline's supposedly a female who's got the head twisted like the exorcist with the lips pushing out, mm, 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 kiss me, kiss me, something like that. That individual, Micheline, a um, bit of a problematic person, to be honest, with bit of a one-dimensional dense mindset it would be realistic when it comes to them stating stuff or being quite full on okay complaining whinging or whining like how it was in 2022 with other people it's not changed since the thing is with micheline she'll state something or question something but when it comes to people responding back with a key question she does not reply and i've seen that too often and i've seen it when i've asked a key question so if micheline has outright defended Jack Newton when it's come to me saying, yeah, but what about the 4 a.m. timestamp? Can you at least make sense of that? And no answer. And some other stuff in between. It's like, why? Is it because they can't be bothered in responding? They don't stick around? They don't check the replies? Or they know they might be in the wrong? Who knows? But Micheline appears to be a bit of a problematic individual when it comes to, you know, being present on this platform. But Regardless, at the end of the day, if whingers and whiners want to come about and stick around or return back on their hands and knees, they can continue to be a statistic on this channel if they want. It is what it is. Anyway, that aside, I think we're done now. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye and good night.